Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Here's actress Joan Bennett. It's terrible to try to act with a dreadful cold. To feel better quickly, I take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress. Yes, tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve cold distress. Four-way, 29 and 59 cents. And now a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Have dandruff for years? Now get rid of it in three minutes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch. Embarrassing dandruff gone. Fitch can also leave hair up to 35% brighter. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. Proudfoot. He's one of the people you ought to know. This is Andy Hill, Chester. Hi, here's the meeting. Sit down, Chester. Well, thank you. Uh, Chester works for Marshall Dillon, Andy. That ought to be a good job. Oh, it's a fine job if you like long hours and poor pay. <laughs> uh, he spends quite a few of those long hours sitting around the depot waiting for the train to come in, Andy. Well, now, that's just so Mr. Dillon will know where I'm at if he wants me. Oh, sure. Uh, you stay long in Dodge, Andy? Uh, maybe. I don't know yet, Chester. I've been advising him to move on. Why? Mostly because I'd like to myself. Your name, Kitty? I'm busy, mister. They told me your name. I'm going to buy you a drink. Come on, uh, over to the bar. Back to your heart, mister. It's full in the air. I'll have no talk from a woman of your kind. All right, you get out of here, mister. Get out you of right me now. Out. You ain't even armed. Well, I'll find me a gun quick enough. Mister! How about me? I'm armed. You're too young to be wearing a gun. Take it off. You do it. You take it off. I sure will. From there. You want to die, don't you? No, I don't want anybody to die. Now, you get out of here. I'm going to put a bullet in you. You can't do it, mister. Don't try it. I'll show you. I told him he couldn't do it. Well, you killed him, Andy. Eh? He was looking for a fight. How well, do you know who he is? I never saw him before. Well, there's Matt. Who? There's Marshal Dillon, Andy. Oh. Did you kill this man? No, I did it. It was self-defense, Matt. He started it and he drew first. And he had to shoot him. That's the truth, Mr. Dillon. 
He was treating this kid bad, and I didn't have no gun, and Andy stood right up to him. Get some help and carry him out of here, Chester. Yeah, that's right, I will. Uh, Alvin, you and Pony, give me a hand here. Kitty, okay. let's step over here, you and uh, Andy, is this? Andy Hill, Martha. Yeah. You should have seen it, Matt. That man had his gun almost out before Andy even started to draw. Well, you're pretty fast, huh, Andy? Well, I'm alive. Where are you from? I told you my name. It don't matter where I'm from. What are you doing in Dodge? I come here looking for a job. An honest job. He told me the same thing, Matt. I believe him. Why would I be lying? Well, the way Kitty described it, you're mighty handy with a gun for a man who's looking for an honest job. All right, I'll move on. I wouldn't have a chance here with you against me. Matt, don't worry about it, Miss Kitty. I'll make out someplace else. Wait a minute, Andy. Yeah. Why don't you uh, go over to the stage office? That's for Jim Buck. What for? He's a driver. He's looking for a man to ride shotgun. You tell him I sent you, huh? All right, Marshal. I'll go. Go on. You see, Matt, he did mean it. Yeah, he wants a job, Kitty. But he's hiding something. When a man hides something, that's usually bad. But I've got a feeling about him, Matt. I think he's all right. Well, I hope so, Kitty. Won't be so good if I've recommended an outlaw to protect the stage. could be more at home with history than Edward R. Murrow. For more than 20 years now, he's focused his attention on world affairs, broadened his viewpoint with travel, and sharpened his perspective by meeting and getting to know many of the leading statesmen of our time. Five evenings a week on CBS Radio, Edward R. Murrow shares his experience with you. For a clear, concise report on today's important developments, join us on most of these same stations when it's time for Edward R. Murrow with the news. A fuller understanding of current events is waiting for you, too, on every lively edition of our World News Roundup. Seven mornings a week on CBS Radio, the World News Roundup takes you to the scene of the news for eyewitness reports by CBS News correspondents. Hear what's happening direct from where it's happening. Get the feeling of the news along with the facts as our World News Roundup comes your way at breakfast time tomorrow and every weekday morning on CBS Radio. I didn't see Andy again that night, but I ran into Jim Buck and he told me that he'd hired him and they were leaving for Hayes City the next morning. It was two days before they were due back before I'd find out if I had made a mistake or not. I waited. The evening they were due, I was down at the stage office. Of course, the stage was late, over an hour late, but finally it came. And there was Andy, up on the box next to Jim. They pulled up, and Jim jumped down and came over to me. Marshal. Marshal, arrest him. Huh? Arrest who? Andy Hill, that's who. If I hadn't heard how good he is with a gun, I'd have taken him myself. I'd have shot him dead. Now, wait a minute, Jim. Wait a minute. What's the trouble? He's mad at me, Marshal. Mad at you? You ought to be tarred and feathered. Now, wait he a minute. held up, Marshal. Held up by heaven. This so-called shotgun man sat there like a owl on a rafter. Sat there and didn't do a thing. Is that true, Andy? Why kill a man for nothing, Marshal? For nothing. The treasure box was empty and we carried no passengers this trip. He didn't get a thing. You didn't know that box was empty until I told you afterwards. I knew it before we left Hayes City. I figured I ought to know what I was guarding, so I found out. Sure, and for all I know, you was in cahoots with that bandit. Maybe him and you were partners. There's no proof of that, Jim. Well, I ain't hiring a man who won't fight. You're fired, Andy. I never want to see you again. I'm sorry, Marshal. I guess I've disappointed you. Uh, because you didn't want to kill a man for nothing? That's right. There, uh, wasn't any other reason, was there, Andy? You 
think I was in on it, too. No, I didn't say that. Good night, Mark. Andy. Andy. Maybe I did make a mistake. <laughs> I wasn't sure about Andy that night, but the next few days changed my mind again. He went all over town looking for a job. He tried everybody and everything, but nothing came of it. And finally, I heard that he'd got discouraged and had quit trying. I had a long talk with Jim Buck, and at the end of it, he was sorry that he'd lost his temper, but he still wouldn't rehire him. And that was that. Until... One night, about a week later, Doc and I were having a beer at the Texas Trail. Well, now, what I've seen of him, Andy's got a lot of pride, man. Maybe too much pride, Doc. Oh, well, he's young. He's feeling his blood. <laughs> we were all like that once. Now, there's more to it than that, Doc. What? I don't know. Andy doesn't talk much, especially to me. Well, maybe he doesn't trust the law. <laughs> Well, most people around here don't. I will. Oh, no, I will. It's Andy. Go away. He's drunk. Well, who's that following him? There's a friend. Now, who is that, man? I'm trying to think, Doc. I've seen his face. Or maybe it was his picture. I don't want to drink with it. You'll drink. Uh, there's going to be a fight, man. Stick around, Doc. We may need you. Hey, leave it alone, sir. I take it bad when a man won't drink with me. You take it anywhere you like. I could kill you, Andy. You're drunk. That's right. Hold it, Andy. You stay out of this, Marshal. He's right, Andy. You're too drunk to fight. Am I? You watch me. Go. 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 What'd you do that for, Marshal? To keep you from killing him, Carrick. You know my name? I heard Andy say it. But I don't want to hear it again, and I don't want to see you again. You find your horse, and you ride out of town, Carrick, and you keep on riding. Now you get moving while you got a chance. Sure, Marshal. Chester? Uh, you should have arrested him, Mr. Jones. He started the whole trouble. Maybe. But right now, get Andy's gun and take him to jail. He can sleep it off there. Yes, sir, I will. Well, you didn't need me after all, man. You know something, Doc? Huh? That's the first time I ever turn an outlaw loose. What? Carrick, I saw his picture the other day on some new circulars. The law in Oklahoma Territory would like to have him back. Well, then why, why didn't you arrest him? Andy's wanted with him. There's no picture, but I remember the description now. Carrick for murder and Andy for robbery. They were partners. And you let a murderer go? Not exactly, Doc. Carrick needs Andy for a partner. That's why he came here. And that's why he'll come back. Yeah, he comes back. You're going to have two outlaws to deal with. Maybe. But it's Andy who's going to have to decide that. He's still got a choice to make, Doc. All I'm doing is giving him the chance to make it. Then why should you risk facing a pack of trouble to, to help a man you hardly know, man? A man who hardly knew me went out of his way once, Doc. Maybe I'm... Kind of paying him back. Oh. Oh, well, I, well, I still say you must have a lot of faith in him. Not a lot, Doc. Just enough to take a gamble. The next morning, it looked like a bad gamble. And he came out of his cell, sullen and angry. And when I gave him his gun back, he took it and left without a word. Later, Chester reported that he'd ridden out of town. And it was several days before I heard of him again. Jones? Yeah, what is it, Chester? And Hill's back in town. Oh? He's standing out there on the boardwalk talking to Jim Buck. I went up and said hello to him, and you know what Jim told me? He's went and hired Andy to ride shotgun for him again. 
Yes, yeah, sir. He was kind of laughing about it. He said Andy spent most of the morning arguing him into it. Said anybody who could talk that good and that long deserved a job, so I guess he ain't mad at Andy no more. Yeah. Jim's bringing a shipment of gold back from Hayes City next trip. Oh? Maybe Andy knows about it. Him and Carrick both. Oh. What's that? It's a circular from Oklahoma with Carrick's picture on it and Andy's description. What's going to do with it? Andy's outside, you said? Yes, sir. I'll be back directly. Hello, Andy. What do you want, Marshal? Where's Jim Buck? He went over to the stage office. Uh-huh. I hear you're riding the shotgun for him again. Any objections, Marshal? Andy, if I had everything on my mind you have, I don't think I'd want to be friendly with the law either. Now, what do you mean by that? Here. Take a look at this. Hmm? So now you know. Now, wait a minute, Andy. I didn't come to arrest you, so don't make me kill you. What? I wanted you to see that circular. I didn't think you and Carrick knew it was out. I don't understand you, Marshal. It was Carrick who held up the stage last time when you were riding shotgun, wasn't it? It had nothing to do with me. I didn't know he was in the country. But you didn't shoot because you didn't want to kill a man for nothing, especially a former partner. Look, Marshal. I think your partner's again, Andy. I think you've got this one planned. You won't take me alive, Marshal. I told you I didn't come out here to arrest you. Why not? Because I think a man who wants it deserves a chance, Andy. You haven't had yours. Not yet. Maybe I'm wrong giving it to you, but I'm going to do it. What do you mean? The stage goes to Hayes tomorrow. It'll be back Thursday. I'm going to be waiting for it, Andy. Waiting real hard. <laughs> been here an hour ago, Mr. Dillon. It's already dark. That's usually late, Chester. Yeah, but why does it have to be late this time? Are you worried? Yes, sir. And so are you. Yeah. I'd like putting your old stake on the turn of one card, I guess. Mm, sorry, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Look, it made it. The stage made it. Yeah, the stage is dead, Chester. But there's no shotgun messenger. Well, I got you right. Well, where is Andy? You mean he quit? I'd call it that. But did he tell you he was quitting? He told me nothing. He just disappeared. Serves me right for hiring him again. I got work to do. Well. Come on, Chester. Let's go back to the office. I reckon he figured he'd get as far as Hayes without you asking him. Then him and Terry could run from there. What you looking at? That rider coming up the street. Leading that pack horse? It's not a pack horse, Chester. It's a body tied across a saddle. And that's Andy leading it. Why, Jim, you're right. Well, now what you done and done? And we'll find out. Hello, Marshal. Hello, Andy. That's Carrick. I got there, Marshal. You killed him? I killed him. No witnesses. 
No way to prove who drew first. Jim Buck told me you ran off up in Hayes City. Jim might have got shot if I hadn't. Oh? Yeah, Carrick was going to hold up the stage again, Marshal, and I decided not to let him do it. But I figured if I tried to fight him while I was sitting up there next to Jim, it would go bad. So you rode back to meet Carrick alone, huh? I left the night we got to Hayes. I found him and told him I was through for good. Well, he got scared and went for his gun. But like I say, I can't prove it was self-defense. Maybe I shouldn't have come back. Nobody's going to believe an outlaw. Chester. Yes, sir. Give Andy a hand with Carrick's body. I, I got some work to do. Where are you going? I'm going to go write a letter to the law in Oklahoma Territory. I'm going to let them know they can withdraw that wanted circular on Carrick. Well, what about Andy and that robbery charge? Well, after I tell him how he brought in Carrick and how he's trying to go straight, I think they won't be too hard on him. You and your best date have a New Year's Eve date right here on CBS Radio. Join us on New Year's Eve as many of these same stations present America's top dance bands, one right after another, for the 1959 CBS Radio New Year's Eve dancing party. From mid-evening right up to dawn, dance to the music of Jan Garber's orchestra and the Glenn Miller Orchestra with Ray McKinley. Ring out the old, ring in the new with the orchestras of Richard Maltby, Count Basie, Vincent Lopez, and Guy Lombardo. Old Lang Zine it with the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra and Warren Covington. The orchestras of Freddie Martin, Duke Ellington, Ralph Flanagan, Lawrence Welch, and Turk Murphy. When 1958 bows out, you supply the partner and the fancy footwork and let the biggest bands in the land take care of the rest. Wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing, ring in 1959 with CBS Radio's Gala New Year's Eve Dancing Party on most of the same CBS radio stations. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was freshly written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Harry Bartell, and Barney Phillips. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. Over the CBS Radio Network.